everybody. Welcome to the Solomon How to Trail Run workshop. This morning we're going to talk about a couple of things. We're going to talk about some general trail running tips. We're going to talk about some uphill running, some uphill hiking techniques, and downhill, how to run downhill on a more technical trail. Right now I'm at one of my favorite trailheads in Central Oregon. This is the Tumalo Creek Trail that we're at. And it's super technical for here in Central Oregon. Not so technical for other places, but that's okay. It's one of my favorite trails. I love that we have all of this land uh, in our backyard. This is basically, you know, Ben's backyard out here. And we have miles and miles of trails like just stretching into the mountains here. We are so lucky to have so much public land and so many trails just right out our back door here in the Pacific Northwest. Wherever you are in the country, hopefully you have that as well. A lot of places do and we are just incredibly fortunate to have that ability to get out just right out the back door and go run some trails. So I hope that this kind of this video will kind of inspire you to get out there to try some new trails, um, kind of explore your boundaries a little bit and kind of make it so that you uh, feel more comfortable getting out on some of those trails that uh, you know you weren't comfortable getting out on uh, before this. This workshop is really meant to not really teach you everything about trail running there's so much to learn but just a few techniques that will hopefully make you more comfortable on those technical trails uh, help you learn some things so that it makes it a little bit easier to run on a trail and just kind of to make it so that you are more comfortable in general out on the trails so first off a couple of things before we start uh, little things that i like to do before this workshop is uh, to get a little bit of a warm-up in so highly recommend if you're out there on the trail I know a lot of you guys might be you know on your computer not able to get out and practice things but if you are on your phone and you're out on a trail um, I highly recommend getting in a short warm-up uh, about a mile or so before um, starting to work on some of this stuff kind of gets you in the rhythm helps you to kind of warm up a little bit and makes it a little bit better workshop also I know a lot of you guys might be on your computer uh, and that's fine, but if you're out there and you have your phone in front of you and you want to practice some of this stuff, I highly recommend just like practicing some of this as we're going along. And I'll give you some, some cues of when to practice and what to practice as we're going through this little workshop, um, like I would do if you were standing right here in front of me and we were out on the trail. Okay, let's get started. So first things first, when you're out on a trail run, I highly recommend, um, especially if you're in a group, giving yourself some space to spread out so that you can see what's in front of you and coming up. You know, when you get so close to somebody else, like it really gets hard to kind of figure out like what is right down at your feet and you end up looking down like this right at your feet. That's not a good position to be in. Running and trail running in particular is very posture intensive and so we want to have good posture. And to be able to do that, you have to be looking out in front of you about 10 meters out or so kind of scanning up and down the trail as you go for those hazards and stuff that you're looking for. So we're gonna start by working on our posture. And our posture is we want our feet about hip width distance apart and pointed straight forward. We wanna have our knees nice and soft when we're running. So at no point in our stance, so we wanna have our knees locked out. Um, and that all kind of like feeds into that good trail running or good running posture. Our hips, we wanna have our hips up underneath us. And a good way to figure out if our hips are up underneath us like this is to do a posture reset, which is just arms overhead, do that, and it's really hard then to get that pelvis out behind you. And we do not wanna be in this position as we're running down the trail. We want to be here so that we are nice and strong, back is nice and straight, and our hips and our pelvis is up underneath us. The next thing is our arms. When we're running, we wanna be nice and comfortable with our arms. Um, they're not way out here in front of us. They're not crossing over. We wanna go from about our hip up to our sternum and just keep them in nice and tight. And then I mentioned your head. If we're looking down at the trail, this kind of gets us into this position right here and, and keeps us looking at the ground, puts our hips out, puts us into bad posture. So we wanna keep that head up on top of our shoulders because it's pretty heavy. So whichever way we kind of throw that thing, our whole body's gonna to wanna to go. So keep your head up on your shoulders, scanning the trail out in front of you, 10 to 15 to 20 meters out, um, kind of keeping an eye on what's coming up. As you get into a technical section, you're gonna be looking down, that's okay. You gotta look at sometimes where your feet are going, but then 
pop that head back up, get it back on your shoulders when you can. And we'll discuss more of that out on the trail when we're doing that downhill section too. In regards to what your feet are doing, try to keep that cadence nice and tight. So really work on your cadence, bringing it up maybe a little bit more. We're kind of shooting for about a cadence of 175 to 180. But again, it all depends on your gait, your height, your stance, whatever it might be. So that's gonna change for each individual person. But if we keep that in nice and tight, and that stride in nice and tight, you're gonna be landing underneath your center of gravity here with your foot underneath you. And that's really one where you wanna be because that's gonna allow you to, if you do get off balance and you hit a rock or something that's loose, it's gonna allow you to pop over that other foot really quickly without rolling that ankle over. The further out we get in front of us and the harder that heel strike is, the more apt you are to put a lot of weight on that foot, lose your balance, and then roll that foot over and end up in the dirt. We don't wanna end up in the dirt. So we want to land with that foot underneath our center of gravity there. And we do that by really kind of increasing our cadence and that's gonna bring our stride, make our stride a little bit shorter. Um, and be kind of, it's really valuable in trail running in particular because that is gonna keep you balanced and keep you running forward and not on your face. All right, here we are at a good uphill section that I like to use for this workshop. If you're out practicing, what you want to find is a pretty good sized hill that is pretty steep. Uh, something that has a couple of fluctuations in it. it goes from less steep to more steep is perfect. Um, but whatever you've got available will work. Um, and then you can practice on your own later on. So with uphill running, uh, one of the things that we often kind of, as we're transferring over from the road to the trails, we kind of mess up is the fact that, you know, if you try to run a trail, an uphill trail, the same as you would on a road, a lot of times it makes it really, really hard. So to make trail running a little bit easier, a lot of times we have to resort to hiking and hiking and walking. It's totally fine. Uh, we're not used to it if we come over from the road running world. Um, but keep that in mind as we're going up a long climb uh, on a trail They can be like thousands of feet long um, or high And so keep in mind that hiking is perfectly okay And I'm going to show you guys how to hike the most efficiently you, you can right now We're going to talk about running uh, with running technique uphill. You want to be nice efficient um, as efficient as you can think about kind of having to run up a trail all day long so don't think of it as like a oh i just got to get over this little rise think of it as like okay i'm going to be running uphill for the next couple of hours i need to find a pace that is very very sustainable where my heart rate stays low and it makes it so that i can get to the top while still having some more energy so so think of it that way um, and it'll make climbing and trail running a lot more fun the other thing, when you're going uphill, think about nice, efficient movements. We want to keep our stride in nice and short. We want to keep our arms pumping, but not pumping so hard that we're getting winded and exhausted. We want to keep them in nice and tight um, to our body and nice and efficient. Keep our head on top of our shoulders and make sure that we're, we're kind of, basically our head is on top of our shoulders so we're in that good running posture back is nice and straight and we're nice we're staying nice and tall when we're out there running up the trail try not to get into this position where we're really kind of bending over and just like getting getting into that bad running posture so try to stay up nice and tall So going uphill for a long time like that, using that same technique of keeping your stride nice and short and efficient get, can get pretty tiring. So what I like to do sometimes is just mix it up a little bit. And another technique that you can use when you're running uphill is to really kind of stride out, take real long strides and really use your arms. Your stride, your cadence is going to slow down a little bit, but what you're trying to do is just trying to get your foot out and then just eat up more room and you're trying to just kind of extend and what that does is allows you to kind of 
change the muscles that you're using, gives those, those little short bursts a little bit of a break. Um, and these are gonna be longer, and so your muscles are gonna work a little bit differently. So I like to mix it up. If I'm going uphill for a long time, I'll alternate between you know short, short steps like that and then real long strides and kind of pull through. Some people really prefer that method for the entire climb. It feels more comfortable to them. So keep that in mind. There's no right way to do this, no right way to trail run. Um, but all I'm trying to do is give you some different techniques that you can use to hopefully make it uh, your trail running more fun. All right, the next thing to talk about is hiking. Don't be afraid to walk up these big hills and trail races. It's gonna help you to get through like whatever it is, a race or a long training run, whatever it might be. Sometimes you just need to hike. So don't be afraid to hike. Things that it can do, it can help keep your heart rate down a little bit lower so that you can last longer during like a trail run or a race, whatever it might be. And depending on the race distance that you're doing, you may have to hike. For a short distance race, half marathon, something like that, you may not need to hike. But for a longer race where it's a 50 mile or a 100 mile, that same grade, you might have to hike it in order for you to get through the race to keep your heart rate down low enough for you to last that long. So keep in mind like how long you're going for, how long the training run is, how long the race is, things like that. There are a couple of different ways to hike too, um, depending on the grade that you're hitting. So basically, there are three different techniques that I like to use for uphill hiking, and it all depends on how steep that grade is, and also how long you're going for. Like a, like a pretty gradual grade, like I said, you might not have to run that, or you might not have to hike that in a short distance race, but if it's a longer distance race, like a 50 miler, you might be hiking everything that is slanted uphill. For a really steep climb, I'll show you a technique for that. Um, and you might, you're probably gonna have to hike that no matter what distance you're, you're running. Keep in mind, we are not going for a stroll out here. We are trail running. So when you're hiking on a trail like this, you're trying to eat up as much ground as you can and still go as, a, as fast and as efficiently as you can. So we're not out for a leisurely stroll. We are really hiking. And what I like to say is we are hiking with a purpose, right? So we are either hands on knees and we are going for it or we are just using our arms to get us up that trail and hiking as fast as we can. You're still gonna keep your heart rate up pretty high when you're out there hiking up a trail, but it just lets you kind of keep it down low enough to where it would be kind of if you were running on the flats. So let's get to it. So the first one that I like to use is the mall walker technique. And so that is for a grade that's pretty mellow. Maybe you're doing a long run, long race, and it's a very kind of mellow grade, but you have to hike in order to keep that heart rate down. You wanna use the mall walker technique. So basically that is really long steps. You're gonna eat up as much ground as you possibly can. You're gonna keep your body upright and your arms are gonna be just going hard. You're not going so steep that you have to be bent over and hands on knees quite yet. And so your arms are gonna be pumping to get your momentum going up that hill and you're gonna be taking long steps as long as you can in order to eat up as much ground. I don't know. <clears throat> All right, so that's the mall walker technique. The second one is just your kind of general uphill technique. It's gonna get a little steeper. The climb is gonna get a little steeper for you and it's gonna be enough to where you have to kind of put your hands on your knees, you're kind of bent over a little bit more and your hands are on your knees and you're really working that. You're still like really reaching out with your foot to try to eat up as much ground as you possibly can, but hands are on your knees and that's gonna help you. You can push off with that and get your upper body into it. One of the really important things was with this is once you do start to bend over and you get your hands on your knees, make sure your back is nice and straight. You want that back straight because once you get into this position and roll your back, 
you're taking your glutes out of the equation and we really want to use our glutes because they are your main muscle driver when you're going uphill um, and so we want to keep that engaged there and the way that you do that is by keeping that back straight and you can kind of do that with me too if you're out there well wherever you are roll your back kind of bend over like this roll your back and then straighten your back out when you straighten your back out you can really feel that glute engage and that's what you want to feel so that second technique just hands on knees, eating up as much ground as you possibly can and just going for it as hard as you can while still hiking, keeping that heart rate low. All right, third technique I like to use, I like to call it the stair stepper because this one is like you are going up a grade that's super steep. You have to hike no matter basically what the distance is and here you're not putting your foot out in front of you very far because if you do, you're gonna fall over backwards or not be able to get up that hill. And so here, you wanna get your foot underneath you like you're climbing a set of stairs. So just like you would be climbing stairs up, you're gonna put your feet on that step and then get yourself up. Here, you're gonna have your hands on your knees again because that is really gonna help you get that upper body into it and make it more efficient. You're trying to hike quickly still um, but you're going at a very, very steep angle. So I want you also to try not using, do, do like a big step up onto a rock um, and not use your arms the first time and then put your arms into it, put them on your hand or put them on your knees and really push into it. See how much easier that is to, once you get that upper body into that, um, to really kind of be more efficient at hiking uphill. All right, last thing we're gonna talk about is downhill running. This is one of my favorite things to do. You can fly downhill, it is so much fun. Um, and so doing it efficiently though, it can be hard and intimidating. Um, I've noticed that you know as you get better at it, you can actually practice it, get better at it, and it becomes more and more fun, a little bit easier, you can relax a little bit. But things that you wanna think about when you're downhill running is one, be relaxed. Try to keep your upper body nice and relaxed. Try not to tense up too much. Keep your stride nice and short. Keep your cadence really high. Like I said earlier, we're really trying to avoid reaching out in front of us, getting that heel on the ground, because if you do lose uh, kind of your footing or lose your balance, your foot is likely to go over, and then you, you end up on the ground because you don't have time to react. So keeping that foot landing underneath our center of gravity um, underneath us really allows us to uh, react quicker. We have a quicker reaction time. We can get over that other foot and get back in balance. Also, we are trying to not break with our heel. So a lot of people, a lot of times, like what we're kind of used to and accustomed to is running downhill, using that heel as our brake. We're trying to get away from that when we're running on trails and we're trying to run and brake using our forefoot. So you're gonna use your forefoot to kind of almost skid to into a stop like that. Use that as your braking mechanism. Another thing to keep in mind when we're running downhill is shock absorption, right? So as we're running downhill, it's pretty, it's hard on our bodies. You're pounding, um, you're pounding your ankles, your knees, your hips, all of that. So we really wanna reduce that impact and make that stress on our joints as little as possible. So. Uh, one of the things I want you to kind of keep in mind is landing on that forefoot. That allows our ankle to be uh, to flex. Also, our knees, keep our knees nice and soft like I talked about in the beginning so that we can use those as our big shock absorbers. I want you to try this. I want you to jump up and use your knees and your ankles. Come down on your forefoot and use that as a good shock absorber. So do that and you can use that as a nice shock absorber. I also want you to try locking out your knees, getting off the ground just a little bit, and seeing what that feels like. <clears throat> if you do that, you're on flat ground, you really feel a lot of that impact in your ankles, your knees, and your hips, and I feel it all the way through my head. So that kind of simulates if you get that foot out in front of you, locked out, and land on that heel, all of that stress is going right up that chain, ankle, knee, hip, 
Um, and so it's really hard on your body. So we're trying to minimize that impact a little bit. Also, I won't lie to you, like part of running downhill is that strength component. Running uphill, you're just limited by your physiology. Going downhill, you're kind of limited by your strength. The stronger you are, the easier it's gonna to be to place your feet where they need to go and absorb that impact because you do get a lot of impact, especially if you're going off of a rock and dropping a few feet as you go down. So can't lie, it is strength dependent on how fast you can go downhill, um, but the stronger you get, and the more you practice this downhill technique, the better that you get and the easier it is. When we're on a more technical trail, um, one of the things to keep in mind and to look out for is what you're landing on. So if you're in the Pacific Northwest, for example, and the rocks are wet and slimy and there's mud in between them, you are trying to land on that dirt, on that mud, um, because that is gonna be your best point of contact and your firmest foundation um, and the best place to put your foot in order to have it not slide out from underneath you. So if you're in Central Oregon though, uh, it's the exact opposite. The rocks are dry, in between, you've got real dry dirt and it acts like marbles um, on whatever surface it's on. So if you hit that dry dirt, whew, you're sliding out. And so what you wanna do is you wanna aim for the rocks because that's gonna be your sticky point of contact and it's gonna keep your foot in place. So it's gonna be a firm foundation. So keep that in mind, depending on where you are, trail conditions may change and you may have to adapt to that. Look for those firm points of contact. It might be in between a rock, might be a rock, um, some of the rocks might be loose, another one might be a good foot plant and a firm foundation for you to land on. So keep that in mind. Look for those firm points of contact that gives you a good foundation to land on to where you don't have to, you, you're not losing your balance. The other thing to keep in mind is that when your feet hit, you may not put all of your weight onto that foot until the next step. So you might have quick foot, quick foot, and then a firm foot plant. Or quick foot, quick foot, a little bit off, and then all of a sudden you need to put that foot down on a firm foundation so you have a good foot plant. Keep that in mind. You're not putting all of your weight on every single step. So you can kind of play with that, play with the trail a little bit, and it, you know, honestly, it makes it a lot more fun. Now it's your turn to get better at trail running. Keep in mind, like we do not want this to be frustrating. We want this to be fun and exciting things for you to think about when you're out on a trail run, not for it to be a lot of hard work. So if you're working on one thing at a time, that's great. Put the other stuff aside for a little bit and then work on, work on something else at a later time. Just try to relax and the, the most important thing is just make it fun. I gotta tell you, it is beautiful out here. I hope you had as much fun doing this as I did putting it together. I hope that was informational and that you have a couple of tricks and tips that you can take away from this that helps you in your own trail running. Um, you know, I really, I want you guys to get out there and explore. I want this to be um, a vehicle that you can kind of use to explore your boundaries or move your boundaries a little bit further out into the wilderness, do something fun, get out there on a trail, um, and just explore, have a lot of fun. Trail running is meant to be uh, this joy of celebrating um, the lands, nature, everything we have around us. So I hope you guys are getting out there, having fun, um, and I will, uh, I'll see you out there on the trail.